Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday, the 28th of September 2020, uh, and the time has just gone 9.54 British summer time. And it's been a fairly positive start, uh, actually, actually it's been a very positive start uh, to the European equity trading session. Uh, we're seeing decent gains. Uh, in Europe, um, across the board, uh, the FTSE is doing quite well. It's up over one point four percent, and it's actually probably the underperformer. Uh, we're seeing stronger gains in the eurozone. But keep in mind, at the back end of the last week, um, we did have quite large losses racked up on eurozone equities. So it seems that we're seeing a bit of a reversal of fortune. Um, there's a several kind of uh, reasons uh, playing into the mix into the into why we've had a fairly positive start to the trading session today. Um, I mentioned how we had a negative end to the equity trading session in the Eurozone at the back end of last week. But on Friday, we had a very strong finish on the US tech sector. And the US tech sector uh, has been kind of really kind of largely influencing not only say the likes of the S&P 500 in the US, but it's also have, 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 has, has had a fairly big impact on European equity markets. So we had a strong finish in US tech stocks on Friday, um, part of that, you know, also feeding into the U.S. story was uh, the Democrats uh, are looking to put together a coronavirus relief package of 2.4 trillion dollars. So they've reduced the size of the package <clears throat> they're looking to put forward. The Republicans will still probably turn around and say that's still that's still too large for us to agree. But the fact that the Democrats are seen to be making, or there's talk of them making some sort of compromise. Um, points suggest that things are heading in the right direction in terms of, you know, political negotiations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Over the weekend, we've heard uh, China posted some um, industrial pro profits figures. Uh, they were fairly, they're fairly respectable for the month of August, which was the fourth consecutive month of growth. So it adds weight to the argument uh, that the Chinese economy is rebounding from the kind of lockdown earlier on this year. Um, in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, it's been announced. It's been, it's, according to the New York New York Times, President Trump uh, basically paid very little tax uh, on the years running up to him being elected as president of the U.S. Uh, it, you know, of course, the, the U.S. president has denied this, uh, saying this is fake news. Um, it doesn't look good for Mr. Trump, but at the same time, it is necessarily bad for the financial markets because uh, Mr. Trump does have a, have a history of whenever there's um, negative news circulating him, uh, can often um, talk about other things such as tax incentives or spending plans or what have you as a way of distracting um, distracting uh, the voters and the traders uh, from, from, the, from, the, from the negative news that surrounds him. So it could be, the, it, it, this could lead to the US president putting pressure on Republicans to try and broker a deal with, with the Democrats or could even be a case of Mr. President talk about what he's going to do when he gets uh, re-elected next. Um, so it is necessarily a bad thing for the financial markets and it would necessarily be an awful thing for his uh, campaign trail given that he had, um, there was a lot of kind of baggage surrounding him uh, in 2016 and that didn't stop him becoming US president then. So the tax situation uh, is not probably possible unlikely to probably really derail his chances against Joe Biden. Speaking of which, uh, I'll be mentioning in the week ahead how he, he has um, a debate versus Mr. Biden um, uh, tomorrow. Um, as always, what I'll do is I'll run down to the major events of the week. I'll look at, at the week ahead article. We can see here um, on the week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, and then under latest news and analysis. Uh, so we we'll talk about the big events, uh, UK EU trade talks. They're going to be gonna, they're going to be resuming again. They're going to be in focus. It's the usual story. Um, <clears throat> that we've heard from David Frost, the EU's chief, chief negotiator in the last, the UK's chief negotiator in the last um, couple of days, said that, that there's been relatively good progress has been made so far, but we're still not quite there yet. It's the usual story. Uh, both sides are talking tough about walking away or uh, about, about drawing lines in the sand in terms of deadlines. But, you know, um, traders will be paying close attention to, what, to what's going on. And any signs of a, of a no deal scenario being wound up um, is likely to put pressure on the British pound. <clears throat> Looking ahead to tomorrow, again, uh, Ferguson have full your numbers out. We also have the first uh, presidential debate uh, between uh, President Trump and Mr. Joe Biden. 
Um, we also have third quarter figures out from Greg's on Tuesday. We have first half figures out from Boohoo, the online fashion crowd. Um, on Wednesday, we have Eurozone CPI numbers, uh, flat CPI numbers. This is going to give us a taste for demand uh, within the currency block. Also on Wednesday, we have the final reading of US second quarter GDP. On Thursday, we have the very different manufacturing PMI reports for the major economies of the world. Uh, we also have the Japan tanking survey. Uh, this, this, this gives an update uh, on the state of the economy. And on Friday, we have the all important US jobs figures, uh, US non farm payrolls. And speaking of US non farm payrolls, my colleague Michael Hewson is going to be hosting a webinar, a live event um, on, on, the, uh, on the day in question. Uh, Friday, the 2nd of October, beginning at 13, 15 British, uh, British summer time. You can sign up for it on our website on cmcmarkets.com under insights and then uh, webinars and events. Uh, as always, I'll do a quick run through of the major indices, the major currency pairs and the major commodities. So as we can see here, we had a decent rebound from, from the lows of, uh, of late March into early June on the FTSE 100, but ever since then, we've broadly been speaking, pushing lower. Um, although we are seeing some positive signs, uh, for, see, see, for example, we can see here that the lows of last week um, were basically there, they're about in line with the lows of early September. And if we can hold above this metric here in around 5,800, 5,767. If you can hold above that zone there, we could see further gains being made. We could head back up towards the 6,000 mark. Uh, and if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the mid-September high in around 6,126. So the trend has been to the downside, but the, we haven't seen lower lows yet. <clears throat> so, but if we do take out this, this metric here and we do have a decent break, below 5,767, that'll be significant because that'll be a new multi-month low and it'll be a new lower low in the kind of downward trend of the last few months. So if we do break below that, that could put us on track down toward this area here in at 5,660, and a move below that could take us back down towards 5,600. Taking a look at what's going on over in Germany. So it was only in, um, the beginning of the month uh, did we actually have a multi-month high, the highest level seen since February. Uh, but since then, like other markets, uh, the German market has come under a fair bit of pressure. Uh, we on uh, Only on Friday, we fell to a level last seen uh, in early August. So things are reasonably, things are kind of, the bearish trend has kind of been, been, been shaking a bit, but you know, we're still above this red line, the 200 day moving average. And while we can, have, can we're also above this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average. Um, and essentially, while we hold above those metrics, it's likely that the wider upward trend is going to continue. If you press on higher from here, we could run into, in, into resistance at this blue line, the 50-day moving average at 12,919. Notice how on a few occasions it actually has support in the past, so there's a possibility it could act as resistance in the future, although there are no guarantees. And if we go beyond that, we could be up heading, heading up towards like the big number of 13,000. And a move beyond 13,000 could then put us on track uh, for the um, for the highs of, uh, of of early September north of 13,400. Um, if you do, on the other hand, have another move lower, if you take out the lows of last week, that could take us back down toward this red line here, the 200 moving average, uh, which comes into play at 12,176. And notice how it acted nicely as support in late July and once again, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future. But as always, there are no guarantees about that. Um, looking now, what's going on over in the US, we had a decent upward, trend, upward move from the lows of March uh, into September. We had its highest level since you know the kind of the since February since the pandemic was setting in. But uh, we have a, since then we've had a lower low, a lower high a lower low and, 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 and we're moving up again. So the broader trend is still very much to the upside. And while we hold above the um, this this yellow line, the 100 day moving average at 26,627, it acted as a support on a few occasions recently. If you can continue to hold above that metric, it's likely that the wider up trend is going to continue. If you press on higher here, we could be retaking this blue line, the 50 day moving average. And if we go beyond that, we could then be heading up towards 28,000. 
and beyond that, we could be looking towards the kind of mid September high of 28,366. But if you do have a, have a size of break below the 100 day moving average, we could then be heading down towards this zone here, kind of the 200 day moving average, this red line here uh, at 26,260 down to the zone of say two, that down, down to 26,000 itself. So that, that 260 point zone could act as support should we see uh, a move to the downside and a break below that could take us back down towards the, uh, the early July lows. Um, in around this zone down around here in around 25,418. Looking at the S&P 500, which has been in the best shape of the lot because when the S&P 500 pushed higher between late March and into, uh, into early September, it actually hit an all time high. So, but like it's a uh, counterpart, the Dow Jones, we've, we've had a lower low, a lower high, a lower low and once again we're, we're, uh, we're rebounding and notice how also the S&P 500 is also uh, um, found support from its 100 day moving average this this yellow line here on a couple of occasions at the back end of last week so while we continue to hold above that metric it's likely that the wider upward trend is going to is going to continue so if we continue to move higher from here we could be looking at retesting the 50 day moving average at 3358 and beyond that, we could head up towards 3,400. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking towards 3,429. If you do have a decent break below the 50 moving average, we could be looking heading to, to 3,200 200, itself. If you go below the 100 moving average, that is. Uh, and if you go below, and if you move below 3,200, it could take us back down toward this red line. The 200 moving average at uh, 3,109, and of course, if you go below that, you know 3,000 uh, will be the, the next big number to keep an eye on. on. Taking a look at uh, what's going on with the euro versus the US dollar. So um, at the beginning of the month, uh, euro dollar hit its highest level in over two years, but we have seen a fairly uh, aggressive turnaround in the US dollar, and in fact, the US dollar index. Uh, basically hit its highest level uh, in over eight weeks, um, not 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 towards the back end of the last week. So we have seen a turnaround in the dollar. Therefore, we're seeing a weakness in euro dollar. The broader upward trend is still very much to the upside. Um, but the last few sessions, we have been moving lower. If we continue to move lower, and if we do break, say, below 116, it could take us back down toward this level here, the 100 moving average. Um, and that comes into play in at one spot, 14.88. You know, we saw a bit of consolidation um, and even uh, resistance coming in coming from the met from the metric um, back in back in March back in May rather. Um, so if we break below that, we could then be heading back down towards 114. We notice how it acted as both kind of we saw some consolidation the kind of 114 area back in July. It also acted resistance uh, in early in early June. But keep in mind the wider trend for the last few months is to the upside. So if we do look to kind of head on higher from here. We could be looking at retesting this blue line, the 50 day moving average, in at one spot of 17.89. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading it back up towards the 120 area. Take a look now at pound dollar. Like I said, Sterling is going to be focused this week in relation to the chatter about and the, and the negotiations between the UK and the EU in relation to the trade. Only at the beginning of the month, because of the dollar weakness, um, the pound hit its highest level since December. But we have seen a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. So once again, we're kind of we're off the recent lows. And if we continue to hold above this red line here, the the trend moving average in at one spot, twenty seven eighteen. If we could hold above that, we could be looking heading back towards one twenty nine, back toward this the fifty day moving average in at one spot thirty um, twenty one. We can see how the fifty day moving average acted nicely as resistance. Um, not too long ago, so that metric could act again as a, a resistance in the near term. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking heading up towards the kind of one spot 32 area. If the market turns over on itself and we take out the lows of last week, we could be heading down towards 126. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading down towards the lows of mid July in at one spot 2480. So we're talking about the US dollar. Um, there's been a fairly strong inverse relationship between the dollar and gold recently. 
so the strength in the dollar has hit, has hit gold because gold is trading dollar. So all of a sudden, a stronger dollar makes it makes it more expensive to buy uh, to buy gold. So gold, which set an all-time high in early August, obviously had a quite a bit of a wobble uh, in the middle of August. It was trading sideways for a number of months for a number of weeks, and it's been pushing lower, uh, and, you know, very recently. Um, if, if, if you take a look at the lows of last week. Uh, in around one spot, 1848. We're currently not too far away from there at the moment. We're currently around 1850. If we can hold above those recent lows, um, you know, we, we stand a chance of the kind of the broad upward trend continuing, heading back up towards one, one sorry, uh, heading back up towards 1900. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this blue line, the 50 moving average, you know, actually nicely a support uh, in, in early September. And the 50 moving average comes into play at one, sorry, 1,943. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards 1,973. Um, if we do, on the other hand, have a decent break below uh, last week's low, we could take us back down toward this zone here in around 1,800. Notice how there's a fair bit of consolidation in the general zone in the middle of July. So keep an eye out. out. Uh, as a as a potential area of support should we have a break lower in silver. Sorry, silver, gold. And lastly, uh, take a look at what's going on on the oil market on Brent crude oil November contract. So the broad trend for the last few months has been very much to the upside. We hit a multi-month high in August. It was the highest level seen since March. But the overall concerns about the possibility of a second wave of, of uh, COVID-19 really kind of Knock the oil market uh, in the kind of early part and the kind of in the, the early and the first few weeks of September. Oil is seen as a good kind of barometer for global demand. Concerns about COVID nineteen shook um, demand shook shook the uh, demand concerns, but we have recovered a fair bit of the ground that has been lost the last few set the last few sessions. And ultimately, if we can hold above the lows, uh, the recent lows in this area here, kind of late, late early to early to mid September. This zone here in around 37, uh, sorry, apologies, in around 39.75 there, thereabouts. So if you can hold above those lows there, it's likely that the kind of broader trend could continue. And if you move up or, upwards from here, we could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the fifth that they move the average in at 43, spot 82. If you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 45. And a move beyond that could take us up towards the highs of, uh, of late August. Um, if we do have a decent break below um, the, the lows of mid, kind of early to mid September, it could take us back down toward the, the lows of mid June, mid June in that in this area here in a 37 spot 93, and a move below that could take us back down toward this zone here in around 36. Um, that concludes this week's video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.